Our second response is from Paul Boddenham, the Director of Operation NOAA and the Chair of Christian Ecology Link. Um, I actually think Paul has spiritual capital in abundance and he's travelled um, from Nottinghamshire to the Operation NOAA lecture, to the launch of the Ash Wednesday Declaration, um, a tremendous inspiration to many of us and his commitment to the cause. So Paul, we might need to give a second response. Thank you, Alan. Uh, yes, I'm not altogether sure about the spiritual capital thing after all, after, after your... Uh, <laughs> uh, we set it as a sort of exam question, really, because it was... It, it, it sounds like a trendy thing, doesn't it? It's, it's the sort of thing that people are talking about at the moment, and yes, it sort of hits some buttons and it has a sort of economic ring to it, which, of course, appeals to the monetization of everything that's going on at the moment. Um, yes, I'm not, like you, I'm not entirely sure that it's going to really get us very far. Um, but first of all, anyway, to say thank you very much to both of you for, uh, for, for a stimulating uh, start. And it's my job to, um, to hopefully help you open out your own thinking and, and engage in some discussion um, by sharing some of my own reflections and maybe you will agree or disagree and please feel free to do that. Um, I was very struck, Jonathan, by your experience of um, uh, well, you wouldn't put it this way, but attempting to do God uh, in the forum. Uh, yes, not God necessarily, but doing spirit. And um, I think we all identify, we've all experienced, uh, those of us that are active in the green movement, uh, the, the discomfort that we, uh, well, not only, only our own discomfort, but the discomfort of our um, fellow travellers, our um, fellow combatants, if we're, <laughs> if we're combative, um, about spirituality, about engaging spirit and talking and speaking at that level. Um, it feels a bit like coming out, um, coming out as Christian in a green context. Um, I know some very interesting work's been done. Maria, <laughs> sat at the front here, has done some fascinating research on work with climate camp participants and how they, um, how comfortable they feel about coming out as Christians. Um, but uh, a far more extensive problem, I guess, uh, that you've experienced is coming out as green in your church. <laughs> uh, and the um, peculiar responses that you get from that. Now, really what, um, what we're here for as CEL is to help you sustain yourselves in that very cold climate, that very strange climate that sometimes we feel we have to live in within a, a congregation. Uh, being the only uh, person who, we, at least we think, gets it, or at least gets what we get. Um, and, you know, I, I'd be fascinated to know, Jonathan, how you keep your head above water. You know, when you're talking to Unilever, for instance, um, how can the same Jonathan Porritt that engages with Unilever be the Jonathan Porritt that's going off to Hinkley Point this afternoon? Um, uh, it's, it's inspiring to think that it can be the same person, and I'm not there yet, because I can't... I can't imagine how you bridge those two worlds, uh, but bridging those two worlds, I think, is, is going to be pretty crucial to getting some kind of dialogue going across the great gulf that seems to be fixed between us at the moment. Um, so, yes, do think about how, how, what's your experience of coming out uh, as, uh, as Greens in the, um, in the churches and as Christians in the Green movement? Do they compare? Um, and uh, yes, I think I, I, I'm beginning to find this whole question of capital uh, questionable because um, one of the, uh, the books that, had, that really proved a turning point for me in my whole approach to this actually was one of yours, Tim, uh, Education of Desire. Uh, it, it, it actually, I, I think it's, it's, it's enabled me to carry on, basically. Um, I probably, um, I'm, I'm not going to do justice to it, so I'll, I'm not even going to attempt to describe what was in it, but what it gave me uh, was a realisation that, um, where, that, that, that something has happened to our desire. In this consumer economy, uh, we no longer desire as human beings are made to desire. A desire has become a commodity, it's become something that's... Um, uh, uh, manipulated, used, uh, we are no longer in command of our 
uh, faculties, our, our God-given uh, resources, our outlook. Um, and you know, as a, as a result of that, uh, we, are, we find it so difficult to make decisions that are, that are good for the planet because we're only making decisions uh, based on the, uh, you know, the requirements that are made of us by the market, by, by the growth economy. Uh, the insidious um, influence of, of growth economics on this, it's not just about um, the way uh, corporations work. Yes, they're all geared to, to maximising shareholder return and all of that, uh, and we all benefit from that in their pension funds if we're lucky enough to have one. Uh, but it's, it, there's a, a deleterious effect on, on our own spirit and on the way we are. You know, it's as fundamental as that. Uh, and the recovery, uh, and recovery is a very important word in this, it's a word that Alcoholics Anonymous use. You know, the recovery that we need from uh, that kind of uh, addiction, you know, let's, let's, um, let's put no, take, make no bones about it. Uh, it's something that, um, uh, certainly I learned from you, Tim, um, <laughs> that may surprise you, but uh, it's something that I feel the church has to teach the world, and that's really, uh, if I dare say so, that sounds a terrible gospel, that doesn't that sound a really um, uh, pretentious thing to say, that the church can teach the world anything, but actually, uh, I think somehow the, the world, the, the culture that we live in has to learn how to desire again, properly, um, to learn how to live with self-giving. And um, the, perhaps one of the most uh, valuable passages to me, um, the most important to me, wouldn't be Leviticus necessarily, but um, Philippians, the great song of Christ's glory, Jesus. Let the attitude, let your attitude be uh, that of Jesus, that of Christ, who emptied himself. Now this is a, to be a self-emptying person, to be a person who doesn't care about their own capital, but for whom capital is out there, capital is shared, something given, something um, to which everybody, all creation is, is, is heir to, uh, that's a fundamental change to, I think, you know, Western, Western consciousness as it's developed, uh, but it's also the fundamental challenge that the Gospel uh, pre presents to us today. Uh, and the Gospel, uh, I think, uh, again, a very difficult word to use, a very much misunderstood word, and I think the way, the way um, uh, churches are perceived to behave, for instance, at the moment, you know, di dictating who can and can't get married, um, uh, what do you do with various, you know, let's think about it, it's not going into details, but various parts of yourself. Um, all of that uh, is, is superficial, really, compared to the fundamental change that, that uh, spiritually, uh, the Gospel invites us to. And actually, I'm confident enough and, and courageous enough, I, you know, I hardly believe that I'm saying this, about what the gospel has to offer the world, to believe that uh, actually we can and we must take people on that journey of self-emptying, so that no longer are we about acquisition, no longer are we about acquiring spiritual goods. Um, no longer is that what uh, salvation is about, that's not what survival's about. It's about giving and sharing and therefore being humble enough and empty hand enough uh, to be in a position to receive. Um, what that means in terms of the way the economy works, well, I guess um, you, I'll have to leave you to join the dots, but it doesn't uh, uh, fit with the notion of capital, it doesn't fit with the notion of, um, uh, of economic, endless economic growth, but rather economic giving. Um, I suppose the final thing I would say is, is this, this language of hope, and um, if I, uh, I, I, and I think the nature of hope, uh, the, the hope that we cling to, is probably where we are, we are most deeply challenged as a faith, as a Christian, as Christians, um, in our belief, because uh, there are, I think there are two kinds of hope. There's, there's, there's the shiny, the bright shiny hope. Uh, which we may feel tempted by, by those glittering um, machines, uh, many of which won't come on stream in time, perhaps. Uh, I think there is a darker form of hope, and I think that still is hope. It is still hope to believe that things may not turn out as we hope for them to be, but hope, but that nonetheless is hope, because it's hope in uh, the sustaining power of spirit of God within us. 
uh, able to draw us to, to God's self through conversion. Um, so so I, w- I would like to invite, I suppose, the church into a, a, you know, a darker understanding of hope, one which is, has more light and shade rather than this gleaming, glittering uh, aspiration that uh, uh, technology and um, the nostrums of neoliberal government uh, would invite us to. Uh, and that, uh, sharing that kind of hope, uh, to me, would be evangelism.